he starts up all right. I was wary of these 207s later ones. See, we had a misfire there. Now we've got an engine light that's come on. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Anti-pollution fault. Oh my God, what's going on? What are they doing to me? As soon as I bought the car, this is it now. It's going downhill. Morning guys and welcome back to the channel and to another one of my vlogs. Well, what are we up to today? Uh, well, we've got quite a bit on. I've got to go to the auction this morning, so we're going to go down there. I've got a couple of cars I need to pick up. Safira, and we're going to pick that up, have a little walk around that today, see what that's like. We won that in the auction last week, along with the Peugeot 207. If you haven't checked out those videos, you can check them out in the link description of our latest auction trip that's just landed. But uh, I'm not going to be doing much filming of the auction itself today because I've actually got another two auction videos already coming out in the next sort of week or so. So we will do a, maybe just a tad of just a look around and filming whilst we're there because there is a sale on today. Uh, I'm getting a lift as well. I usually go up in my truck, um, but I'm just getting a lift today. It's much easier. I don't really want to put Sophia on my truck if I can help it. It will probably just be all right on there and just be under the weight. Um, but ideally, just would rather just drive it. And sometimes it's just nice to have a bit of a change, drive stuff like that. You get a better assessment of also what you're buying. Anyway, we need to get ourselves down there. Like I said, I've got a lift coming in a minute, so we're going to walk, walk up to the top of the road so we can catch my lift off another trader and then get ourselves to the auction. Like I said, have a quick mooch round, get me free breakfast. We've got to get that, that's a damn sure. So we're going to catch the lift. We've got to grab the old bag. This is the old hole here. Basically, got everything in it that I need, all the tray place in there, the camera equipment's in there, jump packs, big bag of keys, because imagine all my cars are sort of all over uh, everywhere at the moment. Uh, yeah, so everything you need sort of in the, the old bag I'm on the lump round with at the moment, like I said, because I'm a bit of a bit of a vagrant sort of wandering around between uh, two two places between my old business and my new business. Uh, yes, it's a bit awkward. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get out there, get the day done, go try and earn a little bit of money or progress towards making a little bit of money. Um and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this vlog. Let's catch a lift. Right, long walk. So basically I live on a New build estate, you can tell all the buildings around, the builders in the background. Uh, and I live right at the bottom of it. So my lift doesn't know exactly know where I am. So I have to go to the top of the road to make sure you can find me. Otherwise, um, in this sort of Hampton Court maze style housing estate, you won't find me. My lift, the lift is here. In typical motor trailer style, we're using a piece of stock. Oh. Right, we're here. Excuse the noise, traffic literally well, right by the road, so it's going to be a bit noisy. This car has a bolt past. Throw me uh, bag in here for now until we get into the auction hall and sort out what we're doing. This is the Safira picking up. I'll do a walk around this in a sec. Um, not a bad old thing, actually. Like we saw it in the auction the other week. I might need some petrol for this when we set, when we set off. Let's make sure it's starting all right before we uh yeah we're starting got blowy exhaust and we'll have a look around in a minute so i'm happy with that starting up we know we can get home subject to uh us uh playing a bit a little bit of roulette to get to the fuel station because it's uh, got no fuel in it whatsoever but anyway never mind like i said we'll have a look around that properly in a bit because i am quite pleased with that and i'll do a proper walk around with it and obviously we'll go for a test drive on the way home hopefully it gets us home Right, so, we have breakfast. We've got a catalogue. Not really interested today, to be honest. There's not much in for me, which is rare, because there's 190 cars in today. Um, but there isn't a lot in for me, per se. But I'll, I'll have a little look round. We'll have a look at a couple. Just something, anything that sort of sticks out. I, say, I don't really need anything at the moment. I've got enough stock. Um, so I'm not really looking to buy anything. I want a man and I go, or a 107C1, something like that. But there isn't any in I've seen. Uh, so there isn't really a lot for me other than maybe the odd bargain that might just come in that's too good to resist. I can't really see me buying much today, but you never know. We'll just stay for 20 minutes. It's a bit, of, some bits in the middle that I'll stay for, uh, and then we'll get ourselves off. Like I said, we're fully stocked up. We don't need anything. I need to be more worrying about getting stuff prepped and ready rather than trying to buy more and create more problems and mess, especially when we haven't got much space. Um, we need to get the Peugeot 207 out in a minute as well. Uh, drag that out, see what that's like. Um, park it up and we can come back for that another day. Might even come back for it this afternoon if we get a chance. Uh, and then we'll get that Sophia rigged up, go for a drive in that. But let's have a look round first because there is one or two bits. Um, and we'll see, see what's about. Let's buy this Mini in black. 
bit mileagey, but it looks a clean old thing. 125 foul. Um, MOT to the number, all form of cubes, a mini one in black. It looks alright actually. I hope you care for the minis. They are not the best things to try and retail. Booking out a lot. It's booking out around four hundred pound mark. Um, you know, if it's five hundred quid below, or five hundred pound dead, thereabouts, I'd probably buy that even today. But I suspect to probably do a bit more. We'll see what it does. Like I said, I am not fussed to buy it or not because I don't need it. But if it's so cheap, you make an exception. I'll have to try and find a home for it. But we'll see what else there is. I think I've seen a couple of bits that might tickle me fancy. This beast, Micra in purple, our edge, beautiful. On it is a little bit, uh, someone's used a braille pad on it. 45,000 miles, one for the keeper. I mean, one litre shape. Might not have enough power steering in this. I assume it probably hasn't. It's got an airbag though. 45k, five door. Is she rotten? Is she rotten? No! That's where they usually go. Solid. There's a new seat on the back there. It looks a lot better, it's just buffed up. Oh, we've got an old there. Uh, little one there, you can quite see it. That's not the end of the world, it's quite solid up than that. That's early doors as well, we'll see what that does. A couple hundred quid, we'll just have a go at it, eh? There's no one's interested, but I think with 45 foul on it, someone will probably want to buy it. Oh, good takeaway delivery car, that. Oh, beautiful. Oh, look at this. Not just cars here, guys, auction. We've got some, got some motorbikes, wheelchair, and a mower. A couple of mowers. Oh, mine a mower. Should sit on mower, so I'm just getting old and lazy. Be beautiful that front garden, get that garden done. What's this? The N900. I know nothing about motorbikes at all. So, a FB monodial flat track. I couldn't tell you that's good or bad. It sounds a little bit rough. Here comes the old girl. Has it got power steering? No. No. no it's old school. Let's see what he does. We're going to take a small one. Wow. It's all one sick. Someone had 500 quid in the head, didn't they? All out. Here's one for you in the corner. Nissan Navara. You have to be careful buying these. Now, these actually, on the face of it, look a really nice thing. And to be honest with you, at the right money, I'd buy one. This one's probably about four or five grand. 13 plate. Good old pickup truck. And you know, you look at the thing, nice fitting thing. Nissan, gonna be reliable, it'll drive nice. I mean, you know, they relatively do for a pickup truck. They're a good old bus and attractive, still look quite modern. Nice front on them, they're a good thing. But they do have a, a Achilles heel where they can effectively just snap in half. What usually happens to them, and I've seen a few, because I've ever seen a few over the years, is they rot where the bulkhead is down here, like a bit of chassis. 
and they're just basically just rotting half and snapping two. You type them on Google, Nevara, snapped in two, or snapped in half, or broken half, you'll see what I mean, it's really common. Um, so you said, there are kits you can use to fix them. Um, if you have to get them early, take the tub off the back, and you can repair them if they're going a bit manky. You strengthen them up and sort of get rid of the water that sort of corrugates inside the chassis. But they are a massive design flaw. Um, so if you're buying one, always make sure you check where the chassis meets the back of the tub here and the back of the bulkhead of the, of the back of the bulkhead of the cab because that's where they go um so they, but I, I, I just don't really buy them on that principle i bought one once that was been repaired and i did all right out of it but you'd just be so careful because if they are completely gone it's a massive undertaking to fix uh, and i've seen some that are beyond repair as well cheap range rover sport coming in let's have a look at this does very cheap Range Rover um, it did have a cool and warning light on which worried me uh, I wasn't really looking to buy it anyway but I just thought I'd have a look as it went through 3,000 was it 200 quid it did it nearly went for about 25 26 the average was going close to going down before that was a cheap car it had 140 odd thousand miles I think it was 150,000 it was quite close to so it's a, a very risky proposition but again they're so cheap they've come down so much them Range Rovers you can literally you're picking them up now we just saw there you know, not far half two and a half grand to sort of four grand you're getting some 10 11 plates 12 plates even i've seen recently you know mileage you know, 100 foul plus you know 120 foul realistically but um yeah what a cheap proposition to buy if you can stomach the fact that you it will empty your pocket and um take over your life just having a mooch outside and mooching about to be honest with you, it's really quiet today um we're not even halfway well we're about halfway through actually and inside the auction hall, there's not many people in. It's in contrast to the last few weeks where it's been absolutely manic. But it's just one of those days where there's not many people about. But for me, there's just not the right cars in for me to be buying. And I don't need them either. So we're just sort of mooching about now, chatting to people, having a chat to a few people. Um, I'll get myself off in a minute, I think, to be honest. Have a look at the last few looks in the outside, really. But House Almera here, we've got here 06 Almera. Beautiful. 170,000 miles, 1.5 petrol. Never really a fan of an Almeida, if I'm honest with you. They didn't drive very nice, but they were half, they weren't bad cars, and they did sell. Um, not seeing many of them now. They're all sort of disappearing. They, obviously, a bit of rot they get to suffer from. Um, and they did odd engines as well in these. Like, this is a 1.5. They did a 1.8 as well. I used to get 1.8s a lot, 1.8 petrols, and they were, they were hard to get rid of them things. But uh, yeah. Don't see many of them anymore, they're, they're disappearing. Right, I'm done in there. I'm not feeling it today on the old auction front. I don't need anything. There isn't really out for me there. Um, and they seem quite expensive today as well. So, probably not the best day to be buying anyway. Um, so, I've got the uh, paperwork for me Peugeot. We're looking for 6A. Black Peugeot 207, I think it was 59 plate. 2009, says here, I've got the logbook in key in my hand. 09 plate 
wasn't a bad looking thing from memory. Well, we didn't want a door strip. Where is it? Let's have a look. Let's fit 500 bath. Aeroplane going over, going low. There's an airfield literally behind the auction and they do uh, skydiving. So you always, have you ever wondered why you always hear like an aeroplane every time you, I come in a, to Aston Barthy Priest? It's because they've uh, constantly got skydiving going on every day. Yeah, I feel punto. You think about that, that's the same punto that started on 2006 model. At Punto Grande Punto, and I've seen these, I think 16, 17 plate they went up to, still running that shape of Punto. Um, and you look at it, you think, wow, how dated is that? I mean, literally, they've been running the same car for over 10 years. Um, yeah, <laughs> showing its age a bit there. Aha, well, here we are, 207. At the bottom, as always, I have noticed actually the key has been redone, it's not original, but it's a uh, Someone's re had me key read on for it, for whatever reason. They do, do have suffer with faulty fobs. I've had a few faulty fobs over the years. And it seems to be having a ruck of cars with fobs not working currently. And this one is another one. Unless the battery's dead, that fob is not working. Mm. Central lock ain't working either. And we ain't got any lights on the dash. This is looking like dead battery territory. No. Oh, okay, maybe not. Well, I wasn't expecting that to start, to be honest, then. Um, that's a shame, because we could have uh, advertised the uh, Top Don JS2000 then, if that had not started, but never mind. No, no, there'll be another day for that. Oh, right. Well, that's a bit of a worry that with the central locking's not working. Let's just try that again. Should we have a central locking button in here? No, it's working. That's weird. Why didn't it work on the door? I wonder if they've just got a dead battery, maybe. No, he's not having that. We haven't got a spare key, but we'll have to sort that out anyway. It's not the end of the world, so it's sorting out a key fob, worst case. Um, he starts up all right. I was wary of these 207s later ones, because they've got that uh, Prince engine in, which is just a bit... Oof. Not bad engines, as in the way they drive. It's just can be unreliable and... You know, you'll buy three and I guarantee one of you, you'll end up gutting them with putting chains on and stuff like that. They just, or oh, the warp pump problems. You've had a misfire there. Now we've got an engine light that's come on. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Anti-pollution fault. Oh my God. What's going on? What are they doing to me? <sighs> see, this is because as soon as I bought the car, this is it now. It's going downhill. All right. So we're going to have to scan it. Um, I've got the machine on me. I mean, I can probably, now I'll probably just park it up and we'll scan it in a bit. It doesn't sound too bad. I mean, I, I know what it'll be. It's either going to be a Lambda sensor fault, but that'd be great if it was, but it won't be that. Um, the fact that you had a little bit of a miss then, it's probably going to be something like a cam chain issue. It could come up with something that's horrible, like a camshaft position sensor fault or camshaft position sensor timing advance, something like that. And that's basically just code for, you need to get yourself a new timing chain. Quick mooch rounder. Um, I'll pop one, I'll look at that a sec. Door strip's missing on the side there, so we're going to need one of them. I mean, to be honest with you, it's not too bad on the body. A few little tiny marks on it will buff up. Actually, I've just noticed. There you are. There's the strip. Ah, that's why it's not on. Then broken off there. Um, I mean, it could be rectified, but we're missing a clip off that end bit there, so it could be tricky to reattach. Probably just cheaper just to get another one, to be honest, but... Uh, um, tyres aren't that bad, they look not great, they're not bad even, we've got four mil, well I can see these two. A few little scuffs like a little touch in, I mean it will make a car this. Um, done under a foul, I remember it's a little bit on the door handle here, I'd have that done, it's a bit on there, you could nib them in maybe just to set, make it look better, but I would paint the handle. Let's have a look under the bonnet. It's sod's law that, isn't it? You buy a car, and when this went through, by the way, I checked it, and there was no engine light on, so it's probably been turned off before it comes here, it's just what happens. Um, got an oil leak, rock cover gasket, see how the corner there leaking, very common. It doesn't look like it's got much coolant in either, to be honest. I'm not going to open it because I've just started, I don't pressurise it. 
but we need to have a look at this because what usually happens on these is well there's a couple of things we've got water, the water pumps on them are crazy set up like a figure of eight type water pump they're odd they can go funny on them and you not know, get good circulation of the water but they also leak on the pipe work as well um let me show you the back of here there's a plastic pipe housing that they leak from very common yeah so we'll need to check that out as well basically gets water in it run up to temp so I'm not, this is not going to be one I'm going to be driving back on, but get this recovered um, and then we'll top it with water when we get back to a safe place uh, and then sort of make sure you get some of the temperature, make sure it's holding the water uh, and then obviously start the process of obviously going through it and work out what we do to it. I mean, it's rectifiable. It's not the end of the world. Um, we need to scan it as well. I would edge my bets that we're going to be putting a timing chain on this after that little misfiring hiccup we just had. But you never know. It might be something more straightforward. You just don't know. Anyway, that's enough for... Uh, Doom and gloom. Oh, mirror as well. You saw that mirror out. Bit of tape on there. Forgot about that. That's easy to sort out. Let's go and uh, get it out the gate. It doesn't drive too bad actually. Is the man on the gate here again? Or is he uh, on his holidays? Oh, he's not here again, Andy. Where are you, man? Well, managed to find his parking space for the Peugeot. Just driving it for short distance. Uh, the back brakes are sticking, definitely. We've got a anti-pollution fault light on, which is um, it's nothing to do. It's, when he says anti-pollution fault on per Peugeots, yes, on a diesel it can mean DPF issues, um, but it's just a generic sort of warning system they use. It it's literally can be just an engine management light to come on, basically. Um, and even doing ignition time and stuff like that will come up as anti-pollution fault. It doesn't mean like there's a problem with a catalytic converter or something like that. Uh, it's just the way they just word it. Right now, French, you know what I mean? You know, you know what they like. We've got a few knocks and bangs on the front ball joints, drop links, stuff like that. That doesn't worry me. That's it, that's all part and parcel. We need to strip for that door. Um, and he wants a tiny bit of paint on that door and a little sort of mirror out. So there's bits to do on it. It's the killer, is that what's causing that um, engine light to come on. We could be looking for a chain at it, because um, that could be a few hundred pounds to put right, and uh, that will take a nice uh, bit of chunk of money out of it. I mean, to be honest with you, we can get it right. You know, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not a disaster. Um, what's it worth? Oh, nine plate, in black. Is it one four or one six? Uh, it's one four. It's one four sixteen valve prints. So it's not too bad. It's a one four. The one you want really in a two oh seven. It's probably twenty one ninety five on the pitch. To be honest with you, we didn't pay huge amounts for it. From memory. I have to check my book of numbers, but from memory, I think it was about 900 quidish out the door. I'll put the exact price down on the screen what it was. There's money to be thrown at it. We could end up spending 500 quid on this if we're uh, not too careful. So we'll have to uh, weigh, up, weigh up the options, if you like. But like I said, you don't always win on everything. i tell you what I do notice now, um, and it's more getting more common, is that the days of just buying something and just like literally sending it to the valors to sell, or just needs an MOT and passes, or needs barely anything, have really gone. It's on the cheapies anyway. Most people really do not look after cheap cars anymore at all, um, and they've always got problems with them. And it's it, years ago when it, literally you could buy cars and spend very little on them. I used to remember the days of just literally buying a, a red car, or something like that. It was what you tea cut in and you just resell it. I mean, they were great days. You know, you have to adapt and change, I suppose. You know, we, if we don't fix these things, we can't sell them and make money out of them. So, no point whinging about it. There's something not right with that door because it should lock on the central locking as well. It's working on the button, the central locking, but it's not working on the door lock itself when you turn it, which it should do, or the key fob. There's something to miss there as well. Oh, the jobs just keep adding up. It's going to be, I'm going to hemorrhage money on that, you watch. Anyway, let's uh, go for all these bits in the car, we'll have lover up round, and then get that Sephira rigged up, I suppose, and go have a crack on with the rest of the day. Nice defender. I like them. They're a bit expensive though for me. It's a three-door one. I like the five-door one. Three-door one. It's a nice looking thing, but I'd have the five-door one. The wife mentioned one the other day. She said, oh, they're nice. I think we can get that idea out of your head. Right. <clears throat> We're done now. Um, leaving the sale. Oh, it's still going on. There's still quite a few bits in, but to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not need to buy anything. So I think we'll just get off now and crack on the rest of the day. We've got a few bits to do. Need to go with the valeters, drop some bits off. Uh, might need to nip into a different dealership as well, make, make a bit on a car, so we'll get ourselves off. Um, I've got a slight dilemma. I'm going to show you around this uh, Sophia in a minute. I'm not going to do it here because it's a bit noisy and you won't be able to hear me properly. Um, but we have got a slight dilemma on my Sophia. 
there is the problem range zero miles and i haven't got a fuel can with me as well which is a bit uh bit amateur of me but uh yeah so we're gonna have a game here what's called fuel roulette so basically what we do is we gamble the fact that we're gonna to get to the petrol station and if we don't we're bollocksed cheers top right rigged up we're gonna do this back to front today usually we walk around it then go for a test drive but if it's a bit noisy we'll do the opposite way around plus we need to get fuel um, this is dangerous fuel roulette um, now I'm quite good at this game whereby you need to get to a petrol station without running out hence the name fuel roulette or as you basically shot yourself in the foot or in the head um, but I have had one occasion where I did didn't quite make it well, we literally have got no miles, the gauge is not moved, it's flashing. Right, so while we're uh, trying to get to the fuel station, I'll tell you a bit about this car. So we bought it last week in the auction, you should have seen it on the last auction video we did. Out the door, this was 584 quid. Uh, the downside to it, it hasn't got a logbook. What is it? It's a Vauxhall Sephira. Maybe I should tell you that first, as we, if you've not already realised. It's a 1.8 petrol. Um, they do these 1.618 petrols, really. They did do a 2.2 petrol early on. The, there's none of them left around because the engine was appalling and didn't really make much viable sense either to be honest um, this one 86,000 miles I'm pleased with that it's not too bad on the bodywork as I'll show you in a bit wants a little bit doing to it but nothing major we've got um, an exhaust blowing somewhere so we need to have a look at that um, it sounds like the back end I think the back box is blowing it does sound a bit like a tank pulling off seems all right it's a 1.8, so it's a bit more peppy than the 1.6. The 1.6s in these do feel a little bit gutless. It's a big car and the engine's not, you know, not that powerful for it really. Um, but it's just, my experience, it is a bit easy to get rid of the 1.6s because most people who buy these big buses, they're not really looking for a quick car. They're just looking for something to move them themselves A to B and they usually got a load of kids in tow. But this one's going for the gears nice. It's a five-speed manual. It's pulling all right. We've got no warning lights on the dash. Does the radio work? Ooh. Yes, it does. Thank God for that. I was worried then. Very smooth radio on. Beautiful. Um, on these, just when you're buying Tafiras, what to check for them? <laughs> Basically, the electrics, they, they, they suffer with like doors that don't open or don't deadlock or don't lock properly. I've had where radios don't work, all sorts of dash problems. And a lot of the problems they seem to suffer from are all seem to be always to do with the doors and where the wiring runs through the doors. So where the hinges of each door, they've got like a wiring part of a loom that goes through in the doors and they just get caught and snagged and get you get cut wires and stuff. Uh, it's really common. You can repair them if you're very, very good at sort of soldering stuff up. If you get any wiring issues, like if you get any electrical faults, always look at the wires and doors. It's usually the rear passenger doors where you get faults with. You can also buy now kits to obviously chop them, sort of looms that are pre-made, sorry. Um, you can put them in. I know a few guys that do that now in the trade who bought them and sort of repaired them. But like I said, typical things on them, anything electrical, always check those back door wiring because it's always that that causes the problems on these things. Um, other than that, really, they're not too bad. I mean, it's just an Astra basically based underneath, so they're quite straightforward. Um, you know, they, they suffer with the usual things that go wrong with them, the MOT tire, like wishbone arms, axle bush is really common, but they're not dear to fix. They're quite cheap to fix. The parts are quite cheap to get hold of. They made these for a very long time. They went from about 2006 to about 2013, I think the shape went up to. So it's a good old run they had of these and they made loads of them as well. So consequently, there's so many parts available for them and they're quite cheap and been mass produced. They're quite good sellers as well as a seven seater. You know, I've never struggled to sell Safira. There's always a market for them. You have to be sort of careful really um, with buying two scruffy ones because they do get abused. You can imagine it's a lot, you get, it's a family car. You got people, a lot of kids in it. They just do get abused and abused a lot. So you're just trying like, to find a nice one, a one you can make nice again. I think this is one of them, uh, but we'll see. Obviously, we're going to go through the numbers uh, and we'll, we will probably document and film this one as we go through because it'd be an interesting car. I don't think we've had a Safira on the channel before, but I do, I do like selling them. Like I said, they're pretty straightforward and don't usually give many issues. Why are you not letting me go? Come on, let me go. Thank you. We are within 100 yards of the fuel station. We're still on zero mile range. The gauge is flashing like hell, but I can safely say we've made it. Right, I'll get her fueled up. Oh, there's a Ferrari there. I'll get her fueled up and um, pull over it and we'll do a proper walk around. Right, let's have a proper look at this Safira. 
uh, spend a few minutes on it so 584 pound out the door bargain really on a 56 plate 18 pastures done it on 86 000 miles so it's a nice old thing really and can be made a car again it doesn't look too bad it's got a few little bits on it we can see straight away obviously we need to get this looked at this bit straightening up going on here we want a bit of repair going on there um get into the body shop man i'll sort that corner out it's not going to cost a great deal to sort out it's pretty straight down the side it's an energy model so it's not got a great deal on it to be honest if you're an energy model it's not really well spec but um it is what it is you would say a few little scuffs on it but these i'm quite happy will come out again this is just scuffs um they'll come out easy with just a buff up so a good mopping will improve his car no end and um, there's no real damage over that corner at the moment we can see off i did notice on the back and we've got a little mark line there but we're not really going to go to the worries of painting that you know it's it's a 16 year old car 17 years on getting on now so you know we can't do everything on it we definitely need to look at the bat light um that's all condensated up so we'll take that off have a look at it sometimes you can fix the seals on them if not we'll just get another light for it it's not difficult to get one of the, the light for these the ten a penny get lights for these um in the back of it ugh, number plates a little bit going on the top there might treat to a number plate oh look got a blowing exhaust that would explain it look back box is uh, completely snapped off oh, it's a shame that because they these i know from memory so i've sold loads of these on astras and voxels ferras these is bo these back boxes are expensive something like that for a cheap like an you know aftermarket back box they're about 80 quid um which in context of the whole car is not dear but you know when you think of other box, back boxes are sort of like 40 50 pound they are quite expensive these i think there might even be more than that i think the last one i bought was about 90 something quid for memory um so we're gonna have to get a back box for it we have to check underneath it may have snapped off further along where it joins the middle pipe so we could be looking at a middle and a rear back box there obviously it'll need doing nice to see that we've got the cover still in there amazing how many times they get left out and thrown out uh obviously got two rear seats that pop up always make sure you check the belts on these and make sure you've got the uh plungers are all there etc because obviously uh, these are testable seats uh, they need to work they need to function the amount of times i used to test these over the years and people used to say to me oh yeah yeah they, they, well fail them on the belt buckles all smashed apart because kids have been in and out of them and stuff and they go oh yeah we don't use those seats it's like well it doesn't matter if they're fitted they have to work you know if you take the seats out then fair enough but if they're in the car and they've got a belt then they have to operate but uh, yeah they, they they are even though they fall down they still have to be they are testable and still have to be functioning um a bit of confusion there if, you, if they were side facing seats i mean you get like you know like old land rovers defenders and discoveries you have them side seats to come down they're not testable uh, nothing to do with the mot they're not the classic temporary seats but it doesn't matter if they're falling down or whatever if they if they're in there guys and they're fitted and secure um and they operate or can be functioned they have to work so we'll dig them up and check them make sure the belts are all working right obviously it's seven seat here you need to make sure you've got seven seats all functioning and working it's quite clean down the uh, near side as well we've got a little bit on the edge there which we'll just nib in it's not a bad old thing really tires if i'm seeing so far look not too bad um we'll go for it fully from the workshop it, it's pretty clean it's a good starting block really to start from oh, that's not too bad about four mil on that one it's not a real lot of the roof bars as well and forgot about them didn't see them so you know from there off there we've got to fix that corner up um a few little nibbing in jobs a good buff up and it'd be a bonny car this um obviously when you sort of exhaust out sort of light out it's not looking too bad it's certainly a more promising prospect than that 207 we got out earlier that that's that's going to worry me a little thing that one let's have a quick look under the bonnet usual things that go wrong on these engines 1618 voxel engines of this era they suffer with oil leaks a lot there you go <laughs> speak of a devil rock cover gaskets leaking but again really straightforward to do it's leaking on that right hand corner there they can also leak on the oil coolers because you can just see that oil filter housing down there and behind there is like a little uh, cooler they common for leaking they can cause basically oil to leak down the side of the block uh, and gets onto the ex exhaust manifold the cap manaverter which is down there and it basically smokes that's what exactly happened on that uh, Chevrolet we just bought a few weeks ago, which I'm going to do a video on. The Chevrolet Cruze, which is effectively an Astra J. That's a really good car, but that has got the same. That has got that problem just explained where it's leaking oil onto the exhaust and just stinking the whole car out. But it's a really straightforward fix to do. You can just buy a new oil cooler with a gasket, so you can just change the gasket. So um, not too difficult. To, not not straightforward getting it off because it's a bit of a faff. Because you have to take the usually you have to take the manifold off to get it to it. But it's not a horrendous job. It's pretty. You know, it looks worse than it is under here. I'm not too worried about that that's it. we can clean that up and make that nice the point is it's driving right that's the main thing as long as it's driving right i'm happy <laughs> with everything else we can sort out 
Right, now, we're brimming with fuel. I put 20 quid in it because we're gonna have to move this around a bit over the next week or so to different places. Uh, for some reason, we've still got no miles on the range. I think we need to drive a bit longer. It will average itself out. But uh, yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite happy with this. You see, starting up on the button, obviously we've got a noisy exhaust. Lights are going out. Yeah, chuffed to bits of it. Stereo's working, the windows are all working, the doors are all working, the central locking's working. It's just little bits like, you know, like this grill vent is missing, but we can get bits in the scrap now, we can fix this. I'm chuffed to bits with this one for the so far. And um, what what do I think this is worth? Um, it's gotta be 1995. It's 86,000 miles. It's 1995 all day, really. Because and I've sold these with 110 foul on 57 plates 58 plates and I get and I've had 2195 out of them in, in uh, last year or so um, So it's at least 1995. So I'm gonna get this back to uh, a friend's house now. who's letting me use a few spaces there um, and then um, Pick up the Astra which we bought in my last vlog which I've now sold to a lady who's having that off me uh, We're gonna need to get it valeted. So we're gonna run around the valeters get that get them to sort it out uh, And then look to get that up to her hopefully today to do the deal on that that'd be nice so uh, let's get ourselves down there crack on with the rest of the day right we're back um drove really nice actually other than it sounded like a chavy boy racer people carrier because we've got no back box um yeah really pleased with it happy with that car doesn't need a lot doing to it in, in the great scheme of things really um, so um, yeah, that is, it. that is a good purchase. I'm happy with that. The only thing I just remembered actually was that that V5. We've got no logbook on this. This is why it's probably a bit cheap in the auction. A bit of a faff. I mean, you, sometimes you get lucky, um, and your logbook turns up before and before you pick it up. You know, the dealers you know, they misplaced it, or the customer brings it in at a later date. It gets sent on, but um, not this time. I'm afraid it had no V5, so we we'll have to apply for one. We could wait and see if it turns up, but it's not really much point, to be fair. I'll we'll take my tray off the back. Um, not really much point, to be fair. Um, just bite the bullet, pay for 25 quid, get a log book. It takes a bit of while as well. It takes about four to six weeks to get a log book at the moment. It's a bit of a pain, to be honest, when you've got no lot lost log books. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to uh, sort that out, uh, get the form in today, get that sent off. Luckily, we don't need to sell this till really August time when we get it ready. We're going to be getting it ready over the next few weeks, ready for the pitch. But that is definitely going to be going on the pitch. So this is what we're going to be um, taking to the valeters now. It's not too bad, this is Astro. We saw this the other day on the last vlog. We bought it out of Prees, uh, Aston Barkley. Didn't give a lot for it. Um, it only owed me 380 quid, this. I had no MOT on it. I was about to run out. Uh, I've got a customer lined up for it. I spoke to her. She wants it. It's one Ford petrol, done 135. For those of you who haven't seen it before. Good tyres on it. Nice thing. Loads and loads of history on it. Loads of history. Um, it, uh, so I say, ran it in for MOT. It did fail. Um, which I expected it to because I could hear a banging at the back. It had a broken spring on the back and the headlights need to clean up as well. This one in particular was really bad. It all faded up. And I've got a set of lights these, so I could have just changed them. Um, but I managed to clean them up a little bit. I mean, they're not perfect, but they got it for the MOT. We set the beam image up. They're all right. They'll, they'll get another year or two out of them. Uh, well, I went on budget for this. The lady has got about a grand spend on it. Um, and I think that was about right for it. I was tempted to retail it because I thought I might get 14 95 on a pitch for that. Um, but it has 130 foul, so it's it's, it's a bit it's a bit on the high end really. But with the history of it, I thought maybe we could do that. But this lady, she's been really good to me over the years. We've got a few cars off me. Um, you know, but she's had good good use out of them as well. In fairness, especially the last one she had. Um, and it's just now come to well, she's actually not even got rid of it. She's just passed it on to her son. So she wants another car. This will fit the bill for her. She's a nice person. Uh, we don't get any much miver from her. She, you know, she works with me. Uh, and she's only got a budget of a grand, so you know I've got to be careful how much I spend on, on the car. You know, I want to spend a bit more on it. Ideally, if I was going to retail it, I would have got the there's a scuff on this side. You know, we'd be we'd be having that sort of we'd be having that fixed up and stuff. You know, when we would have just spent a bit more on it and get it into a more retailable condition. Um, and we've done a few more with the advisors as well. It's now past the MOT. We've done the work on it to get it through the MOT. We've got a few advisories like coil spring, one of the opposite sides of it corroded, stuff like that. But it's you know it's passable. Um, it's a nice thing. Anyway, let's get down to the ballers. Right, rigged up. Oh hang on, number nine I've got the plates on. I've oh, got tray plates in the windy window, man. Right, get 
is off to the valeters. Um, yeah, I was saying about the MOT. Um, so we've got they did the work on it. On this one, so we're working with a budget with a lady because she's only got a grand to spend. So I couldn't go too far with it. And I've got to maintain a margin. And it's not about greed. It's about you know being realistic. I've got you know consumer rights act stuff like that. Even though I know this person and then really if we had a problem, we'd sort it out. So it's not you know it's not like dealing with a normal member of the public where you know you, you, it's a bit more informal. Um, and obviously you know on one side you've got, I've got my side they've got their position you've got to try and rectify stuff you know, using the Consumer Rights Act obviously you've got six months liability for a dealer up to um, at the point of sale but, um, I'll do a video on CRA actually uh, and the, the rights of consumers and dealers uh, in a separate video because it is really interesting um, and there's a lot of stuff actually that people don't know particularly what dealers rights are as well because you always get the, the, the attention of what um, put this window up a second actually because you can't hear me that well you always get told about what the consumer and what your rights are but you never understand what the dealer's obligation and rights are as well because there is rights for dealers in the CRA legislation which people don't really know about uh, and I've seen a few people fall foul them as well when they've not gone down the correct procedure uh, and ended up losing a lot of money when they've had to reject a car when they've been a genuine issue or problem they've had to solve so it'd be interesting to do a video on that um, but as I say you, you need to as, from, because of CRA when you're selling cars you've got to have a margin in to maintain if something goes wrong you need to fix it simple as that so even though that this car practically owes me less than 500 quid of all the work i've done to it yeah i'm making 500 quid but i'm not making 500 quid and you know and that's it being brilliant wash my hands down the port brilliant don't work like that if if this lady rings you up in a month's time who will know and should be very honest on the phone say oh lee there's a problem with the gearbox or something like that or, yeah, i'm fixing it um now i don't think there'll be an issue and most of the time we don't have many problems because I, I like to think I prep things well, but you just don't. Sometimes you have, you know, something that can just occur out of the blue, you never foresee, it just happens. In the same way that one morning we wake up and the car won't start, the battery's dead, and you go, well, yesterday it was fine. Well, that might have been the case, but it ain't now, is it? So we have to budget for those factors. I'd liked a bit more for it, really, but, you know, I've just sort of said, look, I'll do you for X, I'll get it for the MOT, I'll do you a little mini service on it, get it right, get it driving right, uh, and then we'll keep to your budget, and that's what we've done. Uh, always be wary as well. I'll tell you what to be wary of. Get spoke about by dealers a lot. And I used to have it a lot when people used to bring me MOTs, and especially traders. Not so much on newer cars, I get it, but on older cars, stuff like this. If you're bringing in a 2006 split Astra of 130,000 miles on the clock, and you're getting the words, I don't want any advisors on the MOT, or you're saying, I bought a car of 130,000 miles on that's nearly 20 years old and it's got no advisors on it you need to be worried honestly you need to be worried because i'm telling you for someone who's mot probably tens of thousands of vehicles a car of this age will have advisors on it just will i'm sorry if the, if you say that's not the case bollocks it will have advisors on i've seen too many of them i mean something like this it will have probably some slight play in a bush or the axle bush or it might be slightly pitted deteriorated you will just have advisors brake pipes coil springs will be slightly corroded it doesn't always mean they have to be fixed we have to be done you know it, 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 you've got to be realistic of what you're paying for a car at this level i know some people aren't some people will you know expect a 500 pound or a thousand pound or a 2000 pound car to be a 20 grand car but they're just being unrealistic and to be honest with you they're not the sort of customers that you really want as a dealer you don't want someone who's been really picky about something that's clearly just an old car that's doing it that's fit for purpose the dealer's done his best to try and get it to a reasonable state not saying all dealers do there are some showers of shit out there but there are plenty of good dealers who do try and do the best at, you know do service cars properly do put it for mot's do do the work but they can't do everything especially at this level and budget those who watch chop gary he was talking about this recently and he's absolutely spot on trying to sell stuff at this level under two grand is really difficult at the moment and if you're hands-on it makes it a bit easier like guys like me i'm more hands-on and I come from an MOT background, so it does make it a little bit easier for me to try and buy and sell stuff. Um, but when you're having to sort of rely on third parties to do stuff, it, it can be the margins in this stuff can be so slim. And obviously, it's an old car; it's going to got more risk of going wrong because ultimately, it's just had an harder life. It's been used more; it's got more miles on it, more likely because it's just, just generally with age. Anyway, um, quick update on, on the auction. Uh, to you, I wasn't really paying much attention today. I wasn't in a, an auction mood uh, on that mini. I didn't stay for that, it was towards the end. It did, £300 provisional. Now, a mate of mine, trader, he's had his name down on that. 
I probably would have been in that level to be fair, but I couldn't be bothered weighing over 60, 70 cars. I don't need any more stock, really. Uh, although that is very cheap, and I, and I say I don't need more stock, but if I was in the room and that was going through, I'd have been putting my hand up, you know it would have. We're gonna get ourselves down to a dealer friend of mine, he's just around the corner here. Um, I don't think I'll be able to film much to be honest because he's a bit shy when it comes to that um, sort of thing, but um, we'll see if he's got any pie axes in for me and we'll try and scrounge a lift as well because I need a lift to the Valters. So if he's even scrounge a lift there, get this dropped off and then we can get this to the customer uh, tomorrow. But I need to get it in today to the Valters and then also see if we can try and scrounge a cold beverage because I am roasting. Anyway, we're here. Beautiful. Throw me shit in here. Look at that look. Much better. Simple, cheap little 15 quid valet. Transform your car. Look me. Nice and clean, tyres dressed, job done. Oh, right, get this parked up, ready for the customer tomorrow. And then, then we'll go have a look at another part exchange I've just put up. Right, so, Astra's now back. Part that up, the Astra H, the one that's been the Valeters. Went to the dealers, had a quick look around there, the first dealer, he didn't have anything in for me. But uh, give me a lift to the Valeters, which was good. So we dropped that off, uh, spent a little bit of an hour there, had a bit of a chat with him, uh, had a few phone calls for another dealer. Um, so we had to rush back down, get the Astra picked up. 15 quid trade valet, really pleased with that. 15 quid car really moan, washed it, get it quick over out, done the windows, quick wipe down the plastics and doors, dress the tyres, job done. Looked at Bonnie things and said, so we'll get that off to her tomorrow. We went off then to another dealer, um, had a part X in for me, an Astra J, another Vauxhall Astra, but the latest shape, the Astra J. 1.6 petrol, which I've got here now, so I'm going to show you. Um, so a quick clip of me picking up from a dealership there. Uh, I couldn't really do a walk around there at the time because uh, some places, some people don't like me doing stuff like that. Um, they obviously want their own privacy, which is fair enough. So we've got it back here now, I've driven it. So I have already drove it. Uh, let me show you around it. So it's like I said, it's in, in nice bit of grey, uh, 1.6 petrol. I've only gave 750 quid for this, guys. Uh, HBI cleared on 92,000, I think. We'll double check in a sec. But 90 ish thousand miles. It's not too bad as a genuine part X, not really much damage. We've got a bit of bumper problems, I'll show you in a sec, but I'll quickly show you. Nice and straight on the side there, just wants a good wash, it's covered in shite. Um, it's notice actually, all these Astras at the moment seem to be doing this, peeling on the top here, this little bit of uh, rubber trim they have on there where the uh, roof racks would go. I'll have to have a go at trying to sort of fix that up, take it out of that strip and paint it maybe, just get a flip can job and just smarten it up for a little money. Uh, but back bumper is a bit of a disgrace on it peeling quite badly we're gonna have to have that painted obviously that's a bit too too much of an area just to leave um bumper just wants to sort of coming off and fettling back with properly on because it's a bit misaligned and then obviously just paint it uh, it'll do that a bit of bird crap on there wheels want to clean up tires all around are not not too bad we've got one that's a bit iffy probably wants changing all the others are pretty decent uh, a couple of land sales on the front which are just a decent budget tire i said pretty straight thing on the 59 plate asher j 16 petrol 750 pound i think that's cheap we have got a few little issues with it. Like I say, I'll show you inside. When I drove it back, I noticed there's a noise coming from the near side. Like an exhaust rattle. I think there's a blow on the exhaust anyway we need to look at. We've got an engine light on in a set, which we're going to have to scan and have a look at as well as that. So yeah, 94,000 miles, guys. Sorry, it's done. It's five-speed manual, which is what I like. I don't like the six-speed boxes using Vauxhalls this area. They are shocking. Uh, so nice one six petrol, five-speed box, job done. In the back, I mean, it's just nothing really fancy, this model. It's just pretty... Bobby basic, we've got wind me down windows, wants a valet obviously inside, but that's pretty much it. It's not horrendous, really. Got a couple of keys for it. There we go. We're up and running, we're up and running. Code 82, so we've got a few bulbs and bits and bobs out. But uh, as you can see, engine lights on, so we'll have to have a look at that in a sec. We've got a maintenance light on there as well. That's not a service light, that's a general electric light, so it's probably something to do with the engine light, so it does need scanning. We've also got a blowing exhaust i guarantee it it will be the exhaust flexi on the front always common on voxels this era exhaust flexes are pretty crap to be honest with the use on these and they just seem to blow all the time probably what 
I'm hope and I would hazard a guess, we'll have to scan it and see because there might be multiple codes in this, that the engine light's probably something to do with a Lamber sensor. When you get a blowing um, exhaust flexi, because it's a Lamber sensor, particularly the rear one, is near the, the back of the, the, the exhaust, exhaust flexi, it sucks in oxygen, basically air. It's getting sucked in as you're pressing the obviously accelerating, sucking in that air for the gap. It's created the blow. Uh, and then obviously it's just messing up the oxygen sensor, the Lambda sensor basically, and gives all faulty reading. So it's probably something to do with that. But anyway, we'll um, scan it now. Anyway, scan the car. We're going to use the course Top Don Art Diag 600S. Those of you who are not familiar with this machine, diagnostic machine entry level from Top Don. A pretty decent machine actually. I've had this for a while now, a good few months. I use it all the time now. It's pretty much replaced my old Autel machine I used to use. This will do everything really you need to do on sort of amateur level or even just mechanic basic mechanical stuff you need to do. The guys in mechanics out there. It's what entry level machines like 140 quid I think. I'll put you the latest price in the description below where you can find it as well. This will do obviously general OBD, but obviously it'll do in-depth uh, manufacturer sort of scanning for each in manufacturer. It's got unlimited updates as well. It's free. It doesn't cost you to update this machine. The updates alone on some machines are more than what this machine costs just to buy. Uh, so you get unlimited updates, it's absolutely brilliant. Hand brakes, you wind the pistons back into the rear brakes. It's got the function tool to do that on there. I've used that many times. DPF regens, done a regen on this already, worked perfectly. You can set up throttle bodies on it and coding, stuff like that. TPMS stuff, there's all sorts on it. It's really packed with features. For a machine that would have cost you equivalent snap on machine with all this kit on it, would have cost you probably two grand three, four years ago. Um, and you can get a machine for a fraction of the cost that's doing all that and more and won't cost you anything to actually update it. Okay, right, so we're all plugged in. Uh, we're on the main screen now. Basically, quick features on this. We've obviously got general diagnosis, so that is more specific to each manu manufacturer itself. General OBD, so if you want to do a quick scan on something, you could just press that. I mean, we could just use that now. Quick scan, that'll take you through to OBD, but obviously it's a bit more generic. If you want something a bit more specialist, if you're going to go in more in depth, you want to go into diagnosis and do a full scan on the actual manufacturer, get specific codes and a bit more live data. Um, also, we've got maintenance there. Quick look into that. So you've got all sorts of things on there. So you've obviously got like your ABS bleeding. If it's, some vehicles need to be bled with machines now for ABS. Brakes, that was stuff like I said about uh, setting the calipers back on the rear. It had electronic handbrake for pads and stuff like that. So you can put it into workshop mode. DPF, obviously regens, power steering, TPMS, oil maintenance as well. On these, it doesn't matter so much because these the oil service lights are actually done on the dash. But a lot of cars, Volkswagens in particular, Mercedes, BMWs, all them, um, you know, loads of other manufacturers as well, where you physically have to put the car in and obviously uh, re reset their service maintenance lights. This has got all that in there. Like I said, I've used it a few times. Got me out of a jam this did on a Fiat 500 uh, a few, few about a month or two ago as well, which I've already mentioned on a previous video, um, where the, I've had other machines that won't do it, and this thing did it because they get locked out by manufacturers, which is a bit, a bit uh, naughty of Fiat. But uh, yeah, as you've got to say, you've got quite a few options there of course you've got battery mode as well so you can test batteries and start stop and stuff like that so you say and you can upgrade these at any time they see the free to do as well it doesn't cost you anything to upgrade to the latest software and you can even get repair info on certain codes as well give you sort of some generic information that's out there that's been submitted by other users now if we click on diagnosis uh, we've got a few options there you can go into history and go back out into general obd auto search and demo mode uh, we're going to go into uh, we can do auto search if we wanted to that was pick it up straight away um we have got that opal i mean that's the only thing on these guys opal is voxel on these so you have to get your head around that manually select we're going to, we could have just pressed auto search you would have found it but i just thought you know it's the, that's the cheap way of doing it let's uh, do it properly so we go around to 2010 model Let's see Astra J, which I know this is an Astra J. We can, now we can manually select each individual um, system. So we can want to go into specifically to airbags, we can go into airbags, we want to go into engine, we can go into engine, we want to go into chassis, you know, we want to do ABS check, we go into individual. We're going to do health reports, we're going to do a full search if you like. Okay, so we've now done a full scan uh, and we've come up with uh, three faults in the engine control module. Uh, so we can click into that by clicking click enter. I'll go into the communication and then we can have a look at uh, read fault codes, read data stream, which obviously we want to test individual components. Uh, but we just need to go into read fault codes and actually see what we're up against first. Uh, go into uh, read fault code again. And there we go. So we've got uh, PO137, which is a circuit low voltage sensor 2. It's an O2 sensor. So what does I tell you? The rear O2 sensor, so it's his post cat, um, further down on the flexi is faulty and that could be down to the fact that it's blowing a lot the exhaust is blowing it's sucking in oxygen that could be given a bad reading but they are common for going it's probably original that's how little they are probably just change it when you do the exhaust anyway uh, we've also got a engine coolant thermostat heater control circuit fault again um 
I did notice actually just before I turn this off that the um, heaters come in uh, that's the, a bit odd because it's only just started up it shouldn't be coming in and cutting in with a fan and that is down to that engine control heater control circuit fault so basically if the um, thermostat control if the it's got two sensors on it so basically you've got one that runs the actual uh, thermostat and opens and closes it and another one that actually gives it actual reading of the temp water temperature to the ecu which is used in order to uh, basically configure the uh, air and fuel ratio of the car so basically like it's what it's using to effectively set it up and make sure it's running correctly if that fails it just goes into like a basic like a default mode the fan comes on goes into default makes a racket basically to make you aware that something's going on uh, and it can throw obviously a fault light on uh, so that needs looking at it's a simple fix very common on voxels of this area basically we just need to buy a new thermostat control housing with them two sensors change them and then that will solve the problem so that's really straightforward to do uh, and then we've got another generic signal uh, another generic code at the bottom which is p2270 which is um, signal struck, struck lean sensor 2 uh, again it's basically just picking up from that voltage of the o2 sensor that uh, is basically running lean uh, that's a mixture of the factor that's blowing it's blowing the sensor is probably on its way out and also we've got probably uh, it's not fueling correctly because the uh, thermostat control module is sending wrong signals to the ECU and it's basically not got the right mixture. So we've got a few faults to sort out there. It sounds a lot worse than it is. In reality, all we need to do is bolt a new exhaust on, um, sort out, whack a new O2 sensor in and then stick a new control thermostat housing on it, reset it all and it'll run absolutely fine. So it's not too much to worry about. So we've got the information we need from there. There's no point cancelling these off now, deleting them because we're going to have to come back and do that anyway. It'll just reappear if we just went to knock them off. Uh, so we'll just leave that as it is and go back to home page. So the old uh, Top Down Art Dag 600, once again doing its job, diagnosing it correctly, it works exactly as it should. Like I said, I use it all the time now. It was doing whether I'm doing DPF regens, it doesn't matter if I'm doing brakes, you know, rear pads and discs and stuff like that. It is what this is what we're using. Fantastic machine, guys. Um, you can check it out in the description below if you want to buy one. Like I said, the absolute buttons. You will not find a better machine for less money that will do the job. Uh, like I said, free updates as well. Worth its weight in gold. Well worth having. Uh, like I said, check out in the description, guys, and get yourself one ordered today. Yeah, so 750 quid. Please do that. Some very basic maths. I'll tell you what, actually, steering wheel. We're going to need to look at that as well, actually. We'll put that into your budget. Badges come off there, which annoy me. Um, and the steering wheel's not great, as in it's all like it's got like leprosy. Uh, but quick maths, and this is very, very, very rough. Um, we're at 750 quid. Then we've got uh, a need exhaust. We're going to need a lambda sensor. So there's roughly about another 100 quid to buy a lambda sensor and a flexi pipe for this. Uh, and then we're going to need a paint. I mean, paint wise, the bumper wants coming off to probably do anyway because it's a bit. It's not quite fitting right on the edges. You probably can't notice it, but I can see it. Um, you could just probably get away with painting this corner and have it sort of blended in down here so you wouldn't see it. And you touch these in as well when you're sort of painting down there. But to be honest with you, I'd probably get charged 150, 60 quid to have that done. Um, when it's you'd probably just paint the whole thing for 200 quid and take it off and refit it properly. Then you also get bits like that done as well. So it's probably just easier just to bite the bullet, spend two, 220 quid, have it painted, and just get them just to, you know touching a few bits around it you can see and just give a few a bit of a mop over maybe just to, on a few scratches and scuffs that are age related just to tidy it up a bit so probably better off to spending the budget on that so really then we're on about 1150 quid mark we you know we, we throw in a thermostat housing as well which is about 50 60 quid for these so what are we on there 750 150 for thermostat housing and an exhaust and a lambda sensor yeah we're we're, we're we're getting into the reams of 1100 ish quid um and let's assume that we need to spend another couple hundred quid on it you know let's say underneath we need a tire or we get underneath and need some pads or something like that we've got plenty left over that even this came in at 13 or 14 or even 1500 quid if we had to do a cam belt on it because it's done 92 far we've got to check the history might might have already been done we don't know it's either way overdue or it's been done so we'll see but worst case scenario that came in at 1500 quid and it'd be prepped proper there's margin in that because i think it's 2495 car all day long all service up ready to go looking nice easy to easy 2495 car uh, on a pitch so uh, there's margin in that definitely so i'm quite pleased with that really but uh, there was a bit of work to do on it let's not uh, let's not deny it but uh, it'll make a car I'll tell you what i actually will show you actually um this is one of my purchases i should really do a video on this but, uh, but fiesta van looking a bit sorry for itself covered in algae just running drive that it's on the button one four diesel it's got an injector down on it uh, well, temporarily down, down it sort of runs and doesn't run right, and then runs right and then doesn't. But uh, it's an injector fault, very common on 14168 HDIs. I've got another injector for it, like I said, just wants to put it in encoding and uh, desperately needs a power wash. 
but uh, that is probably going to end up coming with us to the new place. I probably will try and sell that. I don't really like selling vans, to be honest with you. I'm not a very van person. Um, mainly because they're difficult to get hold of, really, in the first place. So I don't really go looking for them. But I got offered that right money. It was about 900 quid on a 59. Look, one four diesel. Through about 130 foul. But, you know, it's a two and a half grand van done up, if you get it right. I know you look at it and you think, are well, you nuts? Look at the state of it. How's that two and a half grand? But generally, if you clean it up and get it right, it's worth two and a half grand all day long. But I I'll probably will do a video on it when I clean it up and show you around it. Um, I've got a dilemma with this as well, actually, because someone's converted it back from a van into basically seats in the back. And you can take them out and make it a van again, but you've got to put a bulkhead in. So I've got to make a decision there what to do with it because um, I don't know why, quite sure why they've done that. Anyway, that's another one for another day. The Peugeot, the Minter. I suppose I'm waiting on this to get painted. I'm waiting on the guy, one of the smart pair lads here, to do the paint on it. All I want doing is this little bit down here, match it in. Uh, and he's taking an age to do it. I mean, it doesn't really bother me that much because I don't really need it at the moment because I'm just, sort of just waiting to get on the new pitch. So it just wants that doing and just, just a bit of trim to stuff taking off it and um, washing and, and going with a price in the window because it really doesn't need much else doing to it. It's such a nice car and the aircon works as well, which is great. I can stay here for now, but. Uh, hopefully get done in the next few weeks because I want it done so it can I need to get stuff ready to go on the pitch you know I don't want to go there and turn up with loads of cars I need work on it great getting there and getting the workshops we can do stuff but um, you know we've got a bit more of access to get things fixed but I'd like to get a lot of stuff ready to go on there so we've got stuff to physically to sell and to put up there otherwise we're just going to be using it as a storage yard right I think that's enough for one day guys Got myself off home now. Let me know your thoughts and comments on anything you've seen in this video, on this vlog. Uh, and just a quick update, we have a date, we're moving in. So into the new car pitch, Friday the 4th of August. That's the day I take over uh, the new premises. It's been uh, agreed with the uh, current uh, landlord. Uh, that's why I'm overtaking my friends at departing. He's a friend of mine. Uh, he's departing and I'm moving in on that weekend. The wife's not very happy about that because it's our wedding anniversary, but uh, business comes first, love. She should get over it. We've got plenty more anniversaries, hopefully. But it'll be a very busy weekend, obviously getting my cars on the pitch, and obviously I'll do the grand reveal probably somewhere in that week or so. I'll get some content out to you guys, obviously showing you where the pitch, showing where I am, showing you around the place, uh, and obviously just sort of documenting it as we go along as well. We're covering a lot of it in the vlogs going forward, so I hope you enjoy these vlogs. hope it gives you a bit of extra dynamic as well to what's going on behind the scenes. So thank you for watching my vlogs, guys, and my videos. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you all in the next video.